What is the difference between supply chain governance and corporate governance? A tale of two companies. Both Nokia and Ericsson had experienced business disruption to an equal extent. The two stalwarts in the mobile phone industry in March 2000 were equally impacted by the same event a lightning fire in the chip manufacturing plant of their common supplier, Philips, in New Mexico. Fire damage to the stocks was extensive. More importantly, the manufacturing capacity was damaged, and it wasn't easy to estimate the time for repairs. Nokia had invested significant energy in creating a resilient and responsive supply chain. On the other hand, like most companies, despite their self-congratulatory culture, Ericsson's supply chain was relatively a middle-of-the-line affair that worked well when things were good. After the fire, as the aftermath panned out, Nokia was able to foresee the full impact of the chip shortage on its own business, as well as the entire industry with a lot more clarity than Ericsson, and even Philips. Moving quickly, it activated other parts of its supply chain to show up supplies, to redesign some of the chips to manufacture them in other plants, and to take preemptive steps in the business network. Ericsson let the situation evolve at its own pace and made decisions more reactively, just like most other companies do in similar situations. The resulting gain in profitability and market share for Nokia and the loss of these for Ericsson tipped the balance of the industry to an extent where within a few years Nokia pulled far ahead of the Ericsson which never caught up with its erstwhile equal rival. Corporate governance is not to blame. Neither of the companies mentioned above Nokia, or Ericsson, lacked in corporate governance in any way. Yet, due to seemingly a minor supply chain misstep, one of them nearly lost their entire business.